All right, so now to finish off, a couple of things for uh, housekeeping. Uh, the basics, right? So we've just built a project. We've added a bunch of modules and enclosures. So what's the difference now when we're ordering these and, you know, the rubber meets the road? How do I get a hold of these? Where do I put them uh, inside of Design Center? How do I get them from my customer service team? So I've launched the ordering wizard, and you'll notice on the left-hand side here, uh, enclosures are listed. And now they are expandable. So for example, underneath enclosure number one, I can order just the enclosure, or I can order a module parent, which includes the module and the terminal boards, or I can choose just the terminal boards and the enclosure. Now what this means is that the terminal boards for these specific modules, in this case, this module is the SDM12-EM, the new module, and it will just ship the enclosure and the terminal boards for you to mount uh, and install uh, in the rough-in period. And then later you can come back in, right? and you can uh, select just the modules as you typically would because now the terminal boards as you remember do not ship mounted inside of the enclosure so now you can order just the modules as you as you need now those are for the new standard uh, modules uh, for dimming and their terminal boards if you remember in the other enclosure that we added we also had a bunch of uh, of the uh, other modules we had an older standard dimming module, plus we had the currently shipping fan module and uh, electronic dimming module, etc. relay module. So same, same thing goes here. I want the enclosure maybe, just the enclosure. Or maybe I want the enclosure and the terminal boards. So now you can go through and check each one, and then later on come back in and order again, specifically the uh, modules that you need for the project. Okay. So this is new inside of this version of 3.0 where the modules and terminal boards have been separated out. And that's really important that you remember that for uh, your ordering purposes moving forward. This will how you're going to take care of these modules and, and uh, enclosures moving forward. Similarly, this can be done on the website um, uh, where the terminal boards and the modules and enclosures are all uh, ordered separately um, as, you, uh, as you need for now, in addition to the changes in the ordering wizard, we've also enhanced and improved the enclosure schedule for uh, the installation and wiring diagrams for these enclosures. Let's take a look at that. So go to reports. It's still called enclosure schedule. Go ahead and launch that. It's going to bring up this window, right? And you're taking a look at your enclosure schedule. A couple of things you'll notice. Um, one, that 20 amp line feed for line A as an arc fault is now indicated with gray highlights. You can see that uh, in the image here. Additionally, you're seeing that we've got three loads and a line feed. We got another three loads and a line feed. And uh, we have the total wattage used plus the module number, uh, SDM12-EM here in this particular case. So you can see we've got the new uh, support for the new uh, module here in the enclosure view. Uh, we do have the, in the secondary schedule here, uh, on enclosure number two, that we have the uh, uh, legacy modules, uh, or the legacy dimming module, as well as the other currently shipping relay and electronic dimming modules supported inside of here. A couple of changes in here across the top. You can see there's a new format for this, where we've got the model address location, which is the grouping, right? So where is this enclosure located? What's its enclosure group? or enclosure location, as well as across the bottom, the project name, the new format for the, the schedules. So now that we've run through the various uh, new enclosure and new module scenarios, let's run through a couple of uh, less common scenarios that you may encounter in the field. So for example, you may need to convert a project that was built in 2.3 or the first revs of 3.0 to this new version of 3.0 because your modules and enclosures have not yet been installed and you're going to place new modules and new enclosures in uh, a project that's upcoming or about to happen that's imminent. So how do we go about doing that? Uh, we'll also cover how you can put a new module in a legacy enclosure, an older enclosure, and some of the ramifications or details around that. 
So let's look at the first scenario where we want to change out an entire enclosure uh, and module set for, uh, or an entire enclosure uh, for uh, existing modules or a combination thereof. So what I would do is here I am in enclosure view. This is uh, 3.0, update 2, and uh, you can see I've got a couple of legacy or, or older enclosures in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the tree and right click and I'm going to add an enclosure. So now what that's going to do, uh, we'll slide over and show you, is it's going to add a new enclosure. Um, but what I'm going to do, it's, it's pretty slick. What I'm going to take is in the tree, take enclosure, the new enclosure that was added, and swap it, drag it on top of position number one. That will force it to be a master or a main uh, enclosure version with a controller. See? So you can see we've added a, uh, a controller to that, force it in the right position. Next, what I'm going to do, you can see that here, uh, enclosure 2B, which used to be enclosure 1, is uh, now been moved down. I'm just going to simply take those modules and drag them up position by position and see how it's populating those one at a time. Boom. So now that's, that's created for me, um, if you will, a new enclosure with older modules. What if you needed um, an older enclosure with uh, the new modules. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just undo a couple of those um, operations real quick and go back to an empty position because we don't have the ability uh, to just convert a module per se, unfortunately. It'd be great, but I don't have it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click, say add module, um, right click, add module, right click, add module. So in this particular case, if you remember, we've added 48 loads where before in this other enclosure we have 32. So you may be able to save some cost for your customer based on this particular uh, scenario. So a couple of things you can do is you can expand these out and take and grab uh, each load and move them up one at a time. See how we're doing? See how that it will expand those out for you? So we've got that position, all of those positions available to you. Um, and you can take and grab any of those uh, loads and move them up one at a time. You could have done the same thing uh, across this way as well. I could have taken a load from this position here and dragged it over to a uh, module position on this enclosure. Um, sometimes it's difficult when the uh, enclosures are not visible. It won't just uh, scan across for you. So pick the easiest method uh, on what you're trying to do there and uh, just drag and drop the, those modules uh, and loads uh, as, you, uh, as you need. Okay, so finishing out that process uh, will allow you to have a new enclosure, a new set of modules, and uh, then you can go through and delete these modules uh, once you've dragged over all those loads. Now, it also may happen that you have uh, a need for an older enclosure to not be changed out. It's already installed, and all you're trying to do is either add a module to the project or to change out an old module for a new module, and the older modules, the dimming modules, aren't available anymore. So what we're going to do here is we're going to drag uh, a module, a standard dimming module, onto the enclosure, or I could have right-clicked and say add module, and of course because it's the default module, it will add it uh, directly to that position. Now, a couple of things that you need to note about these uh, modules, these new modules in a legacy enclosure. First off, you'll notice that by default there are only four load positions, 2, 3, 5, and 6, 8, 9, 11, and 12. That's due to the uh, loads 1 and 4 and uh, lines 1 and 4 and uh, 2 and 3 for the uh, particular uh, modules and those uh, four loads disappearing because of legacy mode. Because what happens is we needed to add for you the ability to change out directly without having to worry about uh, 12 loads on a module. You may only need to change out for the eight loads. So what happens is on this module as an example you will see that there is a legacy mode um, checkbox and uh, I'm going to expand this out a little bit so you can see. 
that legacy mode. Okay, so that legacy mode checkbox can be unchecked or checked depending on what you're trying to do. So if you only need four loads per side and one line feed per side, then check the legacy mode which will ship a specific set of terminal boards. If you uncheck legacy mode, it will allow 12 loads and then of course it will ship a separate set of terminal boards that will allow for the six loads per side and the two line feeds per side to help keep those uh, uh, together. Okay, So something to keep in mind when you're working with legacy enclosures is the legacy mode option on the module which will change the number of line feeds and loads uh, and the terminal boards that will ship with that particular uh, or for that particular module in that position that will need to be installed in that legacy enclosure. So there we've reviewed two things. One, where we just were over here, where we've added a new enclosure and a new set of modules, and of course needed to drag across uh, across all of our loads uh, as necessary, or create a new enclosure for existing modules and just drag the modules over, or in the second example where we have a legacy enclosure and we have new modules that need to be positioned, we learned about the specific legacy mode which will allow me to uh, as an installer to separate between either four loads and one line feed per side or six loads and two line feeds per side and ship me different terminal boards based on what I'm trying to do.